As women, we all know that vaginal discharge is a fact of life and we may not even think twice about it. But what is vaginal discharge? How will you know that what you're experiencing is normal or may be an indication of a problem? These and other mind-boggling questions will be answered by our health expert today. Welcome to HealthLink TV Show. I'm Stella. Vaginal discharge, the term for fluid that comes from the vagina is a common concern among women and leads many women to see their health care provider. Some amount of vaginal discharge is normal unless it occurs with itching, burning or other bothersome symptoms. Today on the show, we will look at what vaginal discharge is, the signs of normal and abnormal vaginal discharge, including the most common causes of abnormal discharge, what can be done to determine the cause, what can cause unusual discharge, and when to get medical advice. That was a brief information on vaginal discharge. Our guest for today is Dr. Sadat Bawa. He is the medical director of Crown Medical Center. He's here to educate us more on vaginal discharge. But before we start the discussion, let's go for a break. Welcome back. As I said earlier on, we are discussing vaginal discharge. And our doctor is here to educate us more on vaginal discharge. Doctor, you are welcome. Thank you very much and I'm happy to be part of this program uh, with focus on vaginal discharge and reproductive health. A lot of women experience vaginal discharge. What exactly is vaginal discharge? So, vaginal discharge is one of the most commonest complaints we see in our clinics, either in outpatient or the gynecology clinic. In Crown Hospital, for instance, it's takes about 30% of our outpatient cases. And vaginal discharge is uh, mainly secretions from the vagina that help lubricate and keep the vaginal ecosystem in check. For a lady who is 12 years of old and above, their vaginal wall is mainly made of glycogen. And this glycogen, together with estrogen that is okay. being produced when you are 12 years and beyond, there are some bacteria in the, the vaginal wall called lactobacilli. They act on this glycogen and convert it to lactic acid. So this lactic acid keeps the vaginal environment very good and conducive for both bacteria and fungi to live harmoniously in the vagina. So that is what we refer to as the vaginal discharge. And these discharge or secretions help cleanse the vagina itself and prevent it from any form of infections. So anything that disrupts this ecosystem of the bacteria or the fungi or the pH, the lactic acid that is being produced by the conversion of glycogen to lactic acid uh, causes an abnormal vaginal discharge. What are the types of vaginal discharge? Okay, so generally vaginal discharge could be normal. Every female experiences some form of discharge. A normal vaginal discharge should be clear or white when it's exposed to air. Okay. And it's odor free, it doesn't smell at all. Apart from that, it's not associated with any form of itchiness mm -hmm. or anything. Okay. But if you have an abnormal vaginal discharge, this vaginal discharge tends to be whitish, creamish, or any color that departs from the normal one. Sometimes it may be associated with itching. Other times it smells very foul, it's very foul smelling. It could be fishy, could be malodorous, could be very pungent. So these are abnormal vaginal discharge. But occasionally, you could have excess amount of normal vaginal discharge. Example, when a woman is being aroused sexually, there's a lot of discharge that is being produced by the vagina and that is normal. Sometimes okay. when you are having your menstrual cycle and in the middle of the cycle, the mid-cycle, when you are ovulating, okay. you tend to secrete a lot of discharge from your vagina. That is also normal. In pregnant women and people who are breastfeeding too, they tend to have more discharge in their vagina. Mm -hmm. All these are normal because there is no associated offensive smell, it doesn't itch okay. and it is assumed to be normal. So how will I know that this discharge is normal? How will you know if this discharge is normal? Mm -hmm. So generally if it's a normal discharge, mm -hmm. it should be clear or slightly whitish when exposed to air. Okay. This discharge shouldn't itch you, okay. it shouldn't have any bad smell. Right shouldn't have any bad smell. If it is abnormal, 
So there are various forms of abnormal vaginal discharge. Mm -hmm. The abnormal vaginal discharge, there are three commonest forms we see in our OPD. Mm -hmm. They are mainly bacterial vaginosis, mm -hmm. the yeast infection, mm -hmm. and trichomonas infections. Okay. Generally, if it is a, a yeast infection, it tends to be whitish, chalky, and it itches a lot. Okay. But if it is from a bacterial vaginosis, it tends to have a very pungent smell. Okay. It's either creamish or greenish, and it smells like fish. Mm. Okay. Like tilapia you bought and it's getting rotten. The smell is very fishy. Sometimes too, this discharge could be sexually transmitted, as in trichomonas, and it could be greenish and also smells very foul. So if you have a discharge and you are not sure, generally if the discharge is associated with a foul smell and it's itchy or it's in excess of what you usually, you usually see, just report to a clinic and you'll be examined and, and taken into whether it's normal or abnormal. Before we talk about the abnormal vaginal discharge, mm. what causes normal vaginal discharge? So the normal vaginal discharge are produced from the normal bacteria in the vagina, that line the vag vagina. So the vagina, so every part of your body has some good bacteria. So the normal bacteria in your vagina, as I said, uh, is the lactobacilli. It acts on the glycogen in your vagina wall and produces those secretions that is acidic in, uh, in an acidic medium, lactic acid. has a pH between 3.5 and 4.5. Okay. And that is this normal discharge, this normal secretion that helps cleanse the vagina and keeps it intact. Doctor, can you tell us the amount of discharge that makes it normal? So generally, we, we do not want to quantify because it's even difficult for you to mm -hmm. say you measure a discharge. But every female or every woman, right from puberty, you are able to tell the amount of, the amount of uh, discharge or fluid that lines your, your vagina from time to time. If you find out that that quantum or discharge mm -hmm. is in excess of what you are experiencing, then you, you, you have to be prompted that this is an abnormal vaginal discharge. But medically, there are quantums, but this is difficult to ascertain as a human being. Are you now going to take a bottle to measure what exact quantum is normal or abnormal? But generally, the basic principle is that a discharge should be clear or whitish when exposed to air and shouldn't be itchy, it shouldn't have any foul smell. Those that makes that discharge a normal vaginal discharge. All right. And throughout your cycle, as you said earlier on, during mm. ovulation, mm. you see some discharge. Yes. Can you tell us the nature of the discharge in the various stages during uh, your menstrual cycle? Okay. So generally during your menstrual cycle, depending on how many days you have your, menstru your menstruation for, generally if you are someone who menstruates for three days or four days, during the first few days of your menses, there is blood that is coming out. Okay. Just after your menses, you might have some brownish or bloody discharge that comes immediately after your menses. That is assumed to be normal. Okay. So in the middle of your cycle, assuming your cycle is 28 days or 30 days, in the middle, maybe day 14 or day 15, you tend to have this copious discharge okay. that comes out in some women. Mm -hmm. And that is because of a surge of a certain hormone mm -hmm. called the luteinizing hormone that produces a lot more of discharge from the vagina and that is just to prompt you that you are ovulating and when you are ovulating it means that when you have sexual intercourse during this period you are more likely to get pregnant. So before you continue, how is the nature of that discharge during ovulation? How is the nature? Because I want to see the differences between the discharge during your cycle. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes uh, during ovulation you wouldn't know whether this one is normal or mm -hmm. like I just want you to explain more about the nature, nature of the discharge in the various stages in menstruation. Mm -hmm. So generally, uh, as I said, in your early part of your menses, mm -hmm. well, after the blood comes, after the blood flows, the, in during ovulation, the, the, the discharge tends to be more slimy, okay. more slimy and it's more copious than any other part of your cycle. So it's only during ovulation when you have more discharge. Before ovulation and after ovulation, your quantum of discharge tends to be the same. But it's only during ovulation that your discharge tends to be more copious and it's slightly more slimy compared to before or after ovulation. And what's the color of the discharge during ovulation? So as I said, a normal vaginal discharge should be clear or whitish when exposed to air. And it's the same principle that applies to even during your ovulation. Viewers, you are watching Health Length TV show and we are discussing vaginal discharge. 
doctor taught us about the differences between the normal and the abnormal vaginal discharge. Keep watching, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Doctor, what are some of the factors that expose someone to abnormal vaginal discharge? Anything that disrupts the ecosystem of the vagina, mm -hmm. the bacteria, the fungal, and the pH, would result in you developing abnormal vaginal discharge. So, first of all, if you're a female and you have very poor personal hygiene, mm -hmm. you have a poor personal hygiene, it's likely to interrupt with the flora of the vagina. Mm -hmm. There are some women who wear very wet underwears. And these wet underwears, it's very humid there. Mm -hmm. The vagina is already a tight area, so it creates, if you have a humid area, it's a very good medium for fungal growth. Okay. And you are predisposed to fungal infections. There are some who wear nylon underwears instead of cotton. You know, nylon keeps a lot of heat in there. So if you have heat in there, it's very good medium for fungal growth. And you are predisposed to yeast infection. There are some women who used substances to douche. Just recently, we saw on telly about a woman selling some chemicals to tighten the vagina. Mm -hmm. So when you use some of these chemicals, you clear away the good bacteria in your vagina. Okay. When you clear this good, good bacteria away, it predisposes. And some of these medications are actually irritants. They say they are there to tighten your vagina, but they are irritants. They cause inflammation in your vagina. Okay. If there's inflammation medicine, you call something fibrosis healing. Mm -hmm. If there's healing and tightening of the vagina, or you feel that it's tight, but during sexual intercourse, it's very rough, there are abrasions. We have, we have bricks or abrasions in this vaginal wall. You, pre, you predispose yourself to vaginal infections. And sometimes we get up, we say, oh, we have malaria, we have typhoid. We go to the pharmacy, they give you antibiotics. These antibiotics are broad spectrum. When we say broad spectrum, that means they kill both good and bad organisms. Okay. So these broad spectrum organisms kill all the good bacteria in your vaginal lining. It predisposes you to vaginal infections like yeast infections. Some of these vaginal infections too are sexually transmitted. Mm, so if you are, you are a lady, you have an unprotected sex with two or three men, you are predisposed to vaginal infections like gonorrhea, trichomonas, syphilis, all these vaginal infections can cause vaginal discharge. Sometimes we have individuals whose immune system are suppressed. Okay. Someone with HIV is was low immune system. Mm -hmm. They tend to be predisposed to yeast infections. Okay. People who have cancer and um, chemotherapy drugs, okay. they tend to be predisposed to these vaginal infections. People who are diabetics and their blood sugar is not well controlled, they tend to be predisposed to yeast infections in particular. So these are some of the broad causes of vaginal discharge. And sometimes so when a woman is not well lubricated for sex, suddenly he has sex, mm, the rubbing because there's no lining. Mm -hmm. to make uh, sex very smooth, it disrupts, it kills, uh, disrupts the normal ecosystem of the vagina and it predisposes these individuals to some form of vaginal infections. So these are a few of the causes of vaginal disease. Sometimes we have some individuals who put certain things there, foreign bodies mm -hmm. in the vagina. These foreign bodies can stay there, start smelling and can predispose you to vaginal infections. Doctor, a friend told me that whenever she's bathing, she puts her hand inside and wash the vagina outside. You are talking about if you put something there, you can get vaginal discharge, abnormal vaginal discharge. Does, can that one also cause abnormal vaginal discharge? So generally, if a person is using just clean water mm -hmm. to wash, that is fine. But if the person has clean water with some form of chemical or feminine wash, all these things disrupt the ecosystem. So the best way... The vagina is self-cleansing, but even if you want to wash, it just should be clean normal water to wash your vagina. It shouldn't add any soap or any chemical or any feminine wash. Because some of these, you don't know the contents of them, and they could irritate the vagina and predispose you to vaginal infections. Right. Dr. Bauer, I've been hearing that there are lots of drugs in town that causes the vagina to have a nice smell. Is it good to use those drugs? So generally, as I said, the normal vaginal discharge should be odorless. So if you go in for any cream or any pastry that would let your vagina smell like strawberry or yogurt or ice cream, that is abnormal. The vagina is not supposed to smell like a perfume, no. The vagina is odorless. It shouldn't have any smell at all. So anything that would give your vagina any form of a nice smell like ice cream or yogurt is not something that should be encouraged. And some of these medications, as I said, they are irritants. 
they could irritate the vagina or they disrupt the ecosystem of the vagina and it gives you problems at the end of the day. So it shouldn't be encouraged at all. There are some people too who get up and just move to the pharmacy street and buy their own medication. They go to the pharmacy and say, oh, I'm having a discharge. Sometimes it could even be a normal one. And the person in the pharmacy doesn't even examine you. All he says, oh, it is quiet. He gives you a medication. You go and insert. We've seen a lot of them. They come here in a very bad state. The whole vagina is red because of repeated itching. The whole place is messed up. Right. And you have to spend even more to treat some of these conditions. So it's always good. The time you have a discharge and you are not sure the nature of the discharge, what is causing it, just come to the hospital. With a simple test, mm, we call something we call a high vaginal swab. Okay. We take a swab from the vagina. Okay. That would take some part of the discharge. We send it to the laboratory, look at it under the microscope. It will be able to tell us whether it's a bacteria, it's a fungal, okay. or it's a normal discharge. And with that, we give it the appropriate treatment. But when you go into the pharmacy and get your own drugs, or people sell some of these drugs in buses okay. in town, they give it to you. You insert it, you, at the end of the day, you cause more harm to yourself. And we see a lot of these cases coming to the hospital after buying several medications over the counter. They finally end up here and we have to investigate and spend a long time treating these conditions. Okay. Can fingering cause abnormal vaginal discharge? Okay, when you say fingering, what exactly do you mean? As in, you know, Jerry says the man, or, the man will be putting his hand in the vagina Okay, to stimulate the clitoris. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so generally, so the general principle is that it depends on the personal hygiene of the man you're having the sex with. Okay. The man is not hygienic, the hands has been used to do other things, okay. the hands are not clean, and he's using it to stimulate the clitoris. In that okay. process, he might transfer some infections from the hand down there. The same thing happens if he has very poor oral hygiene and he goes in. To suck you or irritate you by using his lips or your mouth. If the oral hygiene is poor, it will end up disrupting or introducing foreign things into your vagina. At the end of the day, it will cause this, it will disrupt the vaginal ecosystem. Anything that dis disrupts the vaginal ecosystem can lead to an abnormal vaginal discharge. Okay. So, in case I'm experiencing the signs of abnormal vaginal discharge and I don't go to any health facilities, what are some of the complications that I may experience? So generally, it depends on the cause. So in, uh, if you have a vaginal discharge and you do not get it well treated, mm -hmm. there are several complications that could occur. Okay. Especially if it is sexually transmitted diseases. These diseases can move up into your uterus, go into your fallopian tubes, and cause what we call a pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay. This pelvic inflammatory disease can block your tubes. Okay. Eventually, it results in infertility. Okay. So you find out that later, even though the infection is treated, you try giving birth on several occasions and you're unable to give birth. Apart from that, if you have a condition like uh, vaginal candiditis okay. where you itch and scratch the place continuously, okay. the whole place becomes sore. Even if you're in public, you will see that your hand is in your, <laughs> in your, in your skirts scratching. The okay. whole place also becomes red. It makes sex very uncomfortable, very painful, very discomforting. The whole place, you, the discharge eventually becomes very foul smelling. Mm -hmm such that even if you are outside over a period of time, people fail to begin that you are smelling. So it brings out your, your self-esteem. Okay. Even if you are among people, you don't want to be among people for a long time. Mm -hmm. Every one hour or two hours, you have to go to the washroom to clean up. So these, so infertility is a very, very important okay. problem. The foul smelling, mm -hmm. low self-esteem. Apart from that, it makes us very painful, mm -hmm. very painful. And apart from that, there are other systemic complications of various sexually transmitted diseases. And if these are unchecked, it, 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 it can be very deadly. Doctor, so I've been hearing and seeing a lot of things online about steaming vagina. Mm -hmm. So, does it have any effects on the vagina? Can it cause abnormal vaginal discharge? Yes. So, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, even if you want to clean your vagina, you should use uh, a water that is of a normal temperature. If you steam or you heat hot water into your vagina, as I said, this heat can, some bacteria die at a certain temperature. So when you are using this steam or hot water, it kills some normal uh, bacteria in your okay. vagina and that disrupts the vaginal ecosystem and eventually can, can lead you. Apart from that, the steam itself can burn the lining of the vagina, it's very wow. thin. It can burn it, result in some inflammation, it heals okay. by fibrosis and makes your vagina not the best in shape for future use. Okay. So how can one prevent 
abnormal vaginal discharge. So just as I said, if we've, so far as we've seen the risk factors of the causes, based on that we can prevent. So okay. the first thing is poor personal, uh, good personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. We are able to make sure that we have very good personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. For a woman, you should use cotton underwears. The underwear, should make sure that after washing, you don't, you don't just dry them in your washroom. Mm -hmm. The next day you pick them away. Make sure you dry them in the sun. Make sure they are dry. If possible, even you can iron them and put them on because a dry medium will not be good for fungal growth. Apart from that, don't wear your underwear repeatedly. There are some people who wear their underwear for three days and four days before they even wear them. So poor, a good personal hygiene could mm -hmm. prevent you. Then avoid using all these chemicals, all these duches, all these things to tighten your vagina, all these things to give your vagina the strawberry flavor and all those. All these things are okay. irritants. And these irritants are not good eventually, will lead to vaginal infection. Apart from that, you avoid over-the-counter antibiotics. Okay. These antibiotics are broad spectrum. You take them and they kill the normal flora in your mm -hmm. vagina and these predispose you to vaginal infections. Apart from that, we, if you are an individual with systemic conditions like diabetes, like HIV, make sure you see a doctor to make sure that these conditions are well controlled. Mm -hmm. If these conditions are well controlled, you are unlikely to develop vaginal discharge from them. Apart from that, these young ladies coming up, as much as possible, if you are not married and you have a sexual partner, mm -hmm. try to use condoms. If you have one sexual partner, try to use condoms. If you are not, the best is abstinence, but if you can't abstain and you want to get into it, okay. try to make sure you use protection. If you are not using protection, you are at risk of developing all these STIs. Apart from uh, the trichomonas and the bacterial vaginosis and the gonorrhea, you predispose yourself to even serious infections like hepatitis B and HIV. So you try to make sure that you, you use protection when having sexual intercourse if you are not married. So these are some of the ways to, 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 to protect us ourselves from, from having abnormal vaginal discharge. Doctor, thank you so much for educating us on vaginal discharge. We are really grateful for that. Thank you very much for having me and uh, I hope I'll be back another time to throw more light on other conditions of interest to female reproductive health. Yes, next week, doctor will be here to educate us on vaginal yeast infection. So don't miss a time with us, but always remember that your health is our priority. Until then, it's a goodbye. Vaginal Discharge Health Tips Keep an eye on your discharge, unusual colors or consistency can signal a problem. Do not clean your vulva with anything special. It is normal for your vagina to have a slight scent, but when it becomes too strong or smells off, you may need medical attention. Always swipe front to back.